What's up everyone? I'm Joshua Burta from Zemo Media and this is Ask a Marketer. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to set up Google Analytics 4 for Shopify in 2023. If you're not familiar with Google Analytics 4, then it's a free Google service that you can use to measure traffic and engagement across your site so that you have a better understanding of the customer journey. In addition to this, it allows you to track important conversions such as when someone makes a purchase on your site or completes a form. Apart from the fact that this is fantastic for SEO, if you're planning on running ads then it's a must-have because it will allow you to see how people are interacting with your ads and also allow you to set your ads up to track conversions instead of clicks. This means that you'll be targeting those individuals that are actually buying or reaching out to you instead of those that click on your ad and then end up leaving. So be sure to follow all the steps that I'm going to be covering in this video so that you can get the most out of your Google Analytics 4 property. The first thing you're going to want to do is head into Google Analytics. So for this, you can head into Google, type in Google Analytics and you'll see it pop up rather quickly and then you can click on through. Once your account opens up, you can navigate over here to admin in the bottom left corner. And then you can go ahead and create a new account. If you already have an account, then you can instead just create a property, seeing as Google Analytics 4 is just a property inside of your Google Analytics account. But for the sake of this video, we'll go ahead and create a new account. Now you're going to want to create an account name. So I'll go ahead and add in Zemo Media Demo and scroll down, tick this box so I can help our friends at Google improve their services. However, this is entirely optional and then click on next. Then you'll see that they prompt you to create a property name as well, which is for your Google Analytics 4 property. So you can go ahead and name this anything that you would like. However, I'll go ahead and continue with my trend with Zemo Media Demo. Uh, then you'll also want to select a reporting time zone, which I'll keep the United States. I'll also go ahead and change this to Chicago and keep my currency in the US dollar. There's no need to really go into the advanced options over here, seeing as this only allows you to create a universal property. But Google is phasing this out pretty soon, so there's no use in making one now. If you click on next, you'll be required to add in some business information. This is entirely optional and therefore you don't need to add anything over here. However, I will go ahead and just add in some basic things so that Google has a better understanding of what it is I want to do. And that's basically it. So if we click on create, you'll see that uh, you're greeted with a terms of service, which you can go ahead and accept. And once you've accepted it, you have completed your Google Analytics 4 setup. So congratulations. <laughs> now you'll want to create a data stream. You'll see that you have the option to create one for a website, Android app or iOS app. And you can create more than one data stream to go to this Google Analytics 4 property. But I would like to install this Google Analytics 4 property on my Shopify store. So we'll head into web over here. Next, I'll add in my URL and then also just name the stream, which I will once again name Zemo Media Demo. And then I want to ensure that my enhanced measurement is enabled so that we can use that later on. And then you can go ahead and create your stream. Now, as you can see, it will automatically open up this window, which contains a piece of code. This is your Google tag. And seeing as you are using Shopify, you won't actually need this. Instead, what you want to do is head into your store's backend, click on sales channels over here on the left hand side, and then head into your Google sales channel. If you don't have this installed just yet, then I suggest doing so right now, as you will need this to link your Google Analytics 4 property to your Shopify store. As you can see, I already have mine, so I'll click on through. So once this is finished loading, you can go ahead and click on get started to link your Google Analytics 4 account. 
If you're seeing a different menu to what I have right now, this is not an issue at all. All you'll need to do is scroll down and you'll once again see the Google Analytics 4 options. So you can go ahead and click and get started and then you can either keep the notifications from Google on or otherwise turn them off if that's what you'd prefer. And then you can select which Google Analytics 4 property you'd like to connect, in which case this is mine. And you can go ahead and click on connect. And just like that, you've connected your Google Analytics 4 property to your Shopify store. Now that your accounts are connected, you can head back into Google Analytics. You can exit these windows and refresh. And then once you've done this, we can get started with the real fun. Now it's time for us to start configuring your Google Analytics account. So to start off with, you'll want to head underneath accounts, click on account settings and just scroll down to the bottom. You want to ensure that your data processing terms are actually accepted, as you can see mine are over here. And if they are, this is fantastic. If not, it's time to accept them. Now you're going to want to go back into the menu and click on data settings and data collection. Here you'll find Google Signals data collection and you can get started. This is a vital part of setting up your account as this will allow you to collect more data about your customers and this can be used for reporting and remarketing at a later stage. So you can click on continue and then scroll down and click on activate. And just like that, we've activated our Google signals. Now we can scroll down once again and click on user data collection acknowledgement and you'll want to acknowledge this. So click on I acknowledge and just like that, you've acknowledged it. You'll also want to head into data retention over here and then just ensure this is set to 14 months instead of just two and then click on save. Now we're going to set up a few referral exclusions. So for this, you'll need to head into data streams and then click on the stream that you've created. You can scroll down and then click on configure tag settings. And once this is finished loading, you'll need to click on show all so that you can see the rest of the list. So we'll do that and then scroll down. Here you'll find list unwanted referrals. What this is going to allow you to do is just add some domains that you don't want counted as referrals. A good example of this would be your own domain, as well as a few payment gateways such as paypal.com. Then you can add in shop.app, which is usually included inside in with your Shopify account. Then you'll have pay.shopify.com. We'll go ahead and copy this, then add checkout.shopify.com. You'll add in pay.google.com if you're using Google as a payment gateway. You can also add in pay.facebook.com if you are using MetaPay. And finally, as an extra precaution, you'll want to add shopify.com as well. And just like that, you've fully optimized your referral exclusion list. So we can go ahead and click save. And that's basically it. Next, you'll want to head back into the menu. And once you've gotten there, you can scroll down and you'll have the option to link various accounts that you own. So a good example of this would be your Google Ads account or otherwise your Google Search Console account. And the reason why you'll be doing this is so that you can have all of your data streaming into one platform, which is always great for reporting. Now that you've configured all your basic Google Analytics 4 settings and linked all the necessary accounts, it's time to test your tag. To do this, you'll want to open up a new tab to your website and then you can click on reports. Once you've done this, you'll see the option to head into the real time reports, which will show you all the users that are currently active on your website. As you can see, I've got three users active in the last 30 minutes. If this is actually displaying any data, then that means that your tag is working and this is fantastic. You can head back into your admin. The final thing that you're going to want to do is define internal traffic. To do this, you can head into data streams, then click on the stream that you've created, scroll down and head back into configure tag settings. Now you'll click on show all once again, and you can click on define internal traffic.
what this is going to allow you to do is add IP addresses for each of you and your teammates so that if any of you head back into the site from now on, then it won't actually track your activity. So what you'll want to do is click on create over here and then create a rule name. I will call this internal team seeing as I'm blocking all the internal team members, which in this case is only me. And then I'll click on IP address equals. Here you can enter each of your unique IP addresses. If you're not sure what they are, you can click on what's my IP address. As you can see, it will open up a Google search where it displays your IP address over here. And as you can see, mine is hidden for security purposes, but what I'll do is click on copy. Then I'll head back in over here and paste my IP address and then click on create. And there you go. So with all of your internal traffic now defined, you won't need to worry about accidentally tracking your own activity on the site. And that's basically it. Thanks for tuning in. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it valuable. If you're craving more awesome content, be sure to explore our channel, packed with tips, tricks and expert guidance just for you. What's more, we're currently offering complimentary website audits, so you can uncover the secrets to skyrocketing your site's growth. The link's waiting for you in the bio. Before you go, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe for more videos like this.